Hi, everyone. Um, <coughs> uh, so um, I work for a company called Pabeni, and we are a, a design studio that uh, for the past three years um, has been trying to find ways to tackle uh, the issues related to sustainability uh, using service design tools. Um, and uh, so I'm here today to show you what it might look like in, in practice. Um, today's presentation will have three parts. Uh, the first will be a case study of a project we did with an insurance company. Uh, I chose this project because uh, it's been the closest we've come to designing a sustainable service from scratch. Um, in the second part, I'll highlight some shortcomings of the project because obviously it wasn't perfect. Uh, and in the last part, uh, I'll briefly talk about some barriers that we as service designers uh, feel prevent us from having a greater impact uh, on the commercial projects. Um, so uh, let's start with uh, the case study. Uh, in October 2020, a client, an insurance company, came to us with a project brief. Uh, that was pretty much a bunch of keywords. Um, climate change, property damage caused by floods, uh, prevention and CSR as a business principle, uh, meaning that we were supposed to find a way uh, to connect the result of our work to the core business of the insurance company. Um, so yeah, uh, this was the brief. Uh, six months later, uh, we had a concept of a prevention program uh, aimed at municipalities that experience uh, floods. Um, the goal of the program uh, is uh, to uh, help the municipalities to uh, you know, build protective measures in the landscape uh, to make the landscape more resilient to climate change, especially floods and droughts, uh, and as a result, lower the risk of uh, there being uh, damage on the property. Uh, this, is, uh, this is the uh, opening pages of a brochure we uh, created later when we offered the actual program in, in uh, selected municipalities. Um, so, um, how did we get there? Um, First, we defined our strategy uh, that took form of uh, three guiding principles. Uh, the first was that we uh, knew that we wanted to support a systemic change by leveraging a change in behavior of a single actor. Uh, we also knew that we wanted to um, protect as many individuals as possible by changing the behavior of that single actor. Uh, and we also knew that we wanted to make use of uh, previous experience uh, with coalition building that our client had uh, in the area of uh, safe road prevention. Uh, with these principles in mind, uh, we started our initial research. Uh, we did a workshop uh, with uh, the client's employees and we interviewed five external experts. Uh, in both activities, uh, we wanted to understand better the relationship between climate change floods and uh, the property damage. Uh, we used a canvas uh, that, uh, to, to write everything down, uh, to, to write down everything that our participants said, uh, marking the connections between individual facts with arrows so we could uh, you know, uh, make sense uh, out of it later when we uh, you know, analyze the data. Uh, so after the initial you know, gathering of data, we created two visualizations. Uh, that we later used to communicate the issue to the uh, stakeholders of our client. Uh, the first visualization was a map of the problem uh, that helped us understand what are the main topics uh, that are related to our problem uh, and how the topics uh, relate to each other. Uh, we also created a map of the system uh, that helped us to understand uh, the root causes and the development in time that uh, led to the current state. Uh, speaking of the current state, uh, we uh, you know, took three main insights uh, from the research phase. Uh, we learned that the Czech landscape uh, has been severely damaged by uh, you know, mainly uh, straightening the rivers and artificially draining uh, the fields. Um, and it's still being damaged by the way the farmers operate on their fields. Uh, we also learned that uh, the farmers are the, 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 the actors that are best positioned to uh, create, uh, to, to change the current state, uh, but uh, they don't have no external motivation to do so, and so they often don't. And we also learned that um, 
the municipalities that experience floods and want to deal with the issue uh, often uh, are faced with many barriers that they might struggle to uh, overcome on their own. So those were our mm, you know, key findings uh, that informed our next steps. Uh, as I mentioned mm, at the beginning, our client had a previous experience with coalition building and wanted to make use of that experience on this project. So our next step was to uh, try to come up with what the coalition uh, in this case uh, could be about. Um, and uh, while we, have a, wh while we had uh, discussions in our team, we soon realized that uh, we didn't have the same understanding of the words that we used to describe the coalition. Uh, so we couldn't really agree on what the coalition should be about, or what should be its purpose, its structure, and so on. Uh, so to overcome this difficulty, we created a canvas and a set of cards. Uh, the canvas had fields dedicated to specific uh, aspects of the coalition. For example, governance structure, uh, purpose, uh, membership conditions, and so on. And the cards had uh, concepts and definitions on them that describe those various aspects of coalition. So then everybody could you know, take the canvas, take the cards, pick their uh, preferred building blocks and create their own uh, version of the coalition. Um, we called it a strategic Lego. Uh, and in this way, everybody had the chance to articulate their view. Um, and then we could you know, discuss uh, the ideas in our team. Um, and based on these discussions, uh, we uh, you know, uh, uncovered there were two possible directions that we could move forward with uh, the idea of a coalition. Uh, one idea was to create a coalition that would focus on climate adaptation in general. But then we realized that uh, our client didn't really have any um, you know, useful expertise uh, in the area. So uh, they couldn't be really the leader of a coalition. And uh, then we realized that there, uh, there, there, there had already been uh, coalitions and initiatives that you know, try to um, uh, deal with the issue. So it wouldn't really make sense to create another one. Uh, then we considered a coalition that would focus on property damage. Uh, but uh, soon we realized that it would be attractive only to other insurers. And we didn't want to create a coalition of insurers. So uh, we abandoned this idea as well and uh, started to looking for other options. Um, and uh, our instinct was to find uh, an opportunity to help directly one of the actors that uh, are active uh, in, in the problem space. Uh, so we did another workshop. Uh, this time we had a very high level description of the process uh, that needs to be you know, undertaken to build those, protect, uh, th those uh, protective measures in the landscape, uh, trying to pinpoint steps that we could meaningfully intervene in and be helpful. Um, but <laughs> we soon realized that we didn't have enough information, that we didn't really understand what it takes to uh, build those measures and plan for them. So uh, we did uh, additional interviews. I think it, 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 it was uh, two rounds of additional interviews, and we did some other workshops. But finally, uh, we came, uh, came up with a concept uh, because we uncovered the opportunities because we finally understood better the overall process. Um, so uh, we knew that the topic of climate adaptation uh, didn't really have a priority in many municipalities. And that's because they, uh, they have um, many things on their plates and limited budgets and so on. So, um, our first opportunity was find to, to find a way to make it a priority. Um, then uh, we realized that the process of planning and building those protective measures is really complex and it could be really hard for the mayors to you know, um, uh, uh, realize what, what are the meaningful steps that they could take to, 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 make to, 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 to change the current state. Uh, so we figured we could facilitate um, contact with experts that would guide them through the process and uh, make it easier for the mayors this way. Um, and uh, we also mm, you know, find out that um, for the municipalities to be able to build those measures, they first need to know uh, what are the weak spots in the landscape and what are the supposed solutions to those weak spots. Um, and 
to you know, get this knowledge, they need to finance an initial study. Uh, but uh, it's, it, it's quite costly for what it is. Um, and uh, there is always a risk that the study will find out that there is not really much that can be done. So uh, many municipalities uh, are really wary of investing uh, in this type of uh, endeavor. Uh, so we figured we could finance the initial study uh, so they could you know, um, uh, overcome this barrier. And uh, we also um, realized that we could reward uh, those municipalities that uh, successfully built the protective measures uh, by adjusting their um, you know, conditions uh, of insurance. Uh, so make their contracts with the, with the insurance company uh, uh, better. <laughs> um, yeah, so, so those were the opportunities uh, that we uncovered. And we put them together and created a mock-up of a leaflet that described the idea of our prevention program. And we also created a diagram that mm, described the process of going through our prevention program. And we took both and uh, talked to uh, several mayors uh, in an attempt to you know, uh, find out uh, how they would react, um, if they would find our proposition attractive, uh, if there were some uh, barriers in the proposed process that we overlooked and so on. Um, and uh, we uh, find out that the mayors um, liked the idea. Uh, they were willing to partner with an insurance company to deal with this issue uh, and that they would be willing to you know, join such a prevention program. So um, we were relieved. <laughs> and. Um, as a result, uh, we you know, uh, refined the idea a bit further, created, uh, created um, uh, many, many pages long proposal that we handed over to the team uh, that owned the project on the, on the client side uh, and hoped that they would be you know, um, successful in securing a budget for the implementation phase. Uh, and luckily, uh, they were successful. So at the end of the last year, we started the implementation process uh, and now we are in the situation that we will be onboarding uh, a, a bunch of uh, municipalities uh, into the program in uh, upcoming weeks. So it's uh, finally happening uh, after <laughs> nearly two years of, uh, of trying to make it happen. Um, and this brings me to the shortcomings of our project. Um, in the slide, you can see a working definition of a sustainable service that we use in, in Pabeni. Um, so a sustainable service, uh, according to Pabeni, provides value to the end user, obviously, uh, but it also um, you know, makes a decent living possible for everybody who participates on delivering the value to the end user, uh, both directly or indirectly. Uh, and it also uh, does not threaten the decent living of other people. Um, I think the first point is quite obvious. Uh, the second point uh, is concerned with working conditions. Um, so uh, how the service operates and uh, how, uh, you know, uh, how are the uh, employees treated and so on. And the third point uh, uh, is linked to the you know, environmental context that the service is embedded in. Uh, because if a service uh, relies on an endless consumption uh, of fossil fuels, mm -hmm. then it damages the environment and in that way <coughs> uh, threatens our um, chance of a decent living. So uh, this is our working definition and uh, if I look at our program uh, through these criteria, uh, then I must say that I'm not sure that it fulfills them completely. Uh, and uh, one of the reasons why I think that is, uh, is because the project um, was initiated by a CSR department, Corporate, so Corporate Social Responsibility Department, uh, which means that the resources that made the project possible came from the profits the insurance company made elsewhere, uh, among other things uh, by uh, insuring uh, business operations that directly you know, contribute to uh, uh, climate change by burning fossil fuels or uh, you know, mining them and so on. Uh, so in this way, our project uh, from the very beginning wasn't meant to be a self-sufficient business operation. Uh, it was from the beginning something that should be dependent on the company that funded it. Uh, and this is 
from, from my point of view, one of the reasons why we wasn't able to design the service consciously and systematically to fulfill those criteria. Uh, and this brings me to the barriers that I feel uh, I encounter on our commercial projects. Um, and uh, the first one is the fact that in business contexts, sustainability is often framed as a pursuit of positive impact, as something that has to do with redistributing profits that have been made elsewhere, uh, which I think is uh, you know, really troubling framing, uh, because from my point of view, uh, I would argue that uh, the sustainability should focus on finding new ways of making profit, not redistributing it. Um, yeah. Uh, second barrier uh, I, I feel uh, we, we, we are faced with is that um, businesses are told that the innovation, that, 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 uh, the, the, the key to making profit is innovation, which is to a certain degree true, uh, but uh, the way innovation is framed for them is very limited. Uh, it's often something that happens on a display or something with a display. In other words, it heavily relies on digital technologies and is usually only the te digital technologies layer uh, that's being really you know, changed and innovated. And uh, that's troubling because the underlying social structures, the ways of working, of organizing, the ways of making profit uh, remain unchanged. Uh, and if the businesses are told that innovation is only something with a display or on a display, then they have you know, no uh, incentive to uh, be finding new ways to make a profit which brings me back to the first barrier. And uh, the third uh, barrier is that um, sustainability is really a complex topic. Um, uh, I myself feel sometimes overwhelmed by the amount of information I need to digest to uh, make sense of it. Uh, and it could be hard for the company, it is hard for the companies to you know, uh, find what are the meaningful steps uh, they can take to you know, uh, change something. Um, and so they often do not seek the opportunities because it, it really requires uh, a lot of effort. Um, and in an attempt to you know, lower this uh, one barrier, uh, we are now developing a workshop activity uh, that's based on the donut economics model by Kate Rayworth. Uh, you might uh, know it. Uh, which um, the, the, the idea of the workshop is to have an activity that could be done in about two hours and that uh, doesn't require um, you know, uh, some thorough uh, preparation uh, and uh, you know, uh, vast amounts of data and so on, uh, that, uh, that can you know, help the company to begin the journey towards more sustainable uh, operation, to uh, get a better idea of what are the important topics and how they relate to a business operation. So, uh, the way it works is uh, there, are, there is a set of questions. Uh, each question asks uh, about a specific you know, um, dimension of, of what companies do. Uh, and there are always uh, you know, possible answers that the participants choose from. And um, the answers are formulated in a way that it's uh, quite easy to find the you know, most fitting answer and uh, by answering the questions, uh, the participants gain points, and uh, through uh, you know, uh, counting the points, they gradually uh, create a visualization that shows how what the company do, uh, does, um, uh, how, how it contributes uh, to uh, fitting into the safe space of, of the donut model, or uh, reversely, uh, what, uh, what, what they do that prevents our society to fit into the uh, safe space. Uh, so, yeah, uh, this is our first attempt to lower one of the barriers. Um, and um, as I said, it's currently being developed, so it's not uh, ready to be used yet. Uh, but uh, once, it, uh, once it's finished, uh, we are planning to release it to, uh, for, for uh, you know, uh, unrestricted use. So if you'd like to be notified when it happens, then uh, you can subscribe to our newsletter where we will definitely share the news or you can follow me uh, directly on LinkedIn uh, if you'd like to do that. And uh, that's uh, all from me. So um, thank you very much for inviting me to the conference and thank you for your attention.